Hello and welcome back to Land Rover Toolbox videos and I'm glad you can join us again. Right, so we've uh, got to show you this little addition to our workshop equipment, which is an air compressor. It's a three horsepower motor, uh, 230 to 240 volts, 50 hertz. Uh, basically, it's just for domestic use. Uh, this has a, a single piston compressor on it, which makes it quite noisy. However, it's uh, very handy for the cost, which is a one-time lifetime investment. Good for running power tools, which is needed in our work. And of course, there's always options to buy more equipment, which is air operated. So we're next looking for a jack like this, which is powered by air to uh, lift vehicles up easily. Okay, so this video we're going to show you how to check for a rumbly wheel bearing. So we're going to start with chucking the vehicle at the rear with two chocks, then jack it up and support the axle with an axle stand. Basically, I've shown you how to check for wheel bearing at play, and this one we're looking for wheel bearing rumbling if you're suspicious that your bearing is rumbling. What happens with a Land Rover, because you have a live axle at the front, it's quite difficult to spin the wheel enough to listen for sound. So what we're going to do is actually remove the wheel first of all. Um, I'm using an air gun here, obviously it's slightly different if you're going to use just a wheel brace. However, we're going to get to the uh, driven hub first and we're going to remove that. So first of all, if you don't know, pop the cap off and then take the circlip off. And underneath the circlip you have a couple of shims which you need to remove and save. Next is to remove these bolts which hold the drive flange on. Hopefully you won't have much problem at removing the bolts and then it's a matter of removing the drive flange. These bearings have been in for roughly six months now. They're from Bearmark. I'm just going to push out the pad just slightly so it's not binding the disc up. Now we can spin the wheel bearing freely and listen for a rumbling noise. Basically, doing it this way, it's not enough. We're going to have to fit the wheel on temporarily. So if we pop on the wheel and screw on a couple of wheel nuts to retain the wheel, um, this way we can spin the wheel much faster and listen for a rumble. Two nuts is sufficient to hold the wheel on. You don't have to torque them up or anything like that, obviously. Um, so I'll just quickly whiz these up with the air gun. Right, once that's been uh, tightened up, then we can spin the wheel and spin it quite fast and have a good listen to see if there's any rumbly noises. This way you can tell if a bearing is pitted or damaged. On this specific bearing, I don't think you'll hear anything here because it's in very good condition. If you heard a rumbling, then your bearing would need changing. Okay, so we do have a tutorial on changing wheel bearings. However, these wheel bearings are okay. So we'll just go ahead and fit these set screws back in. What you'll notice is a little bit of blue dripping out of there. These threads are thread locked. This does actually stop the bolts from coming out and stop the moisture getting in. And you'll see also I'm putting a little bit of copper slip on here so we don't have the bolts uh, seizing to the apertures of the drive flange. Makes life easy. Anyway, do them up and torque them to the correct torque. Before you fit the wheel back on again, check for cracks, any damage to the wheel rim. Also, the mating face on this side of the wheel could do with a good clean if it's got crap on there. Um, nice, smooth face is always good for clamping wheels back onto the hub or the spigot face. Likewise, with the spigot face or the hub itself, ensure that the uh, face, the mating faces are clean. Looking in the Land Rover workshop manual under wheels and tyres, we have a description of what we should do to treat alloy wheel uh, mating surfaces. 
Land Rover state that ensure the retaining studs and the nuts are clean, basically clean the rust off, and the alloy wheels lightly coat wheel mounting spigot face with a suitable anti-seizure compound to minimise the possibility of adhesion between wheel and spigot face, and then fit the wheel back on without damaging the stud threads. Do not apply oil to the thread of the stud. Okay, so basically that's cleaning the threads of the stud up. Okay, that's all of the studs, all five of them. Make sure there's no rust or debris on the threads at all. Use a wire brush, all right, like so. Now that's the easy bit. Next bit, use some copper slip and not too much of it. This is an anti asesia compound. So it's just a matter of putting a thin layer on the spigot face, okay, or the mounting surface where the wheel will come in contact with the steel. To be honest with you, I'm not happy with putting lubricant on the mating faces. As you can see in the workshop where I'm at, it's a heavy goods vehicle repair workshop, we have our own practice. What we have here is a mating surface, very much the same as what you would with your Land Rover. It'd be the same thing where the wheels are bolted onto. This is a rear hub of a DAF unit, okay, like so, you can see it. Over here we have the wheels which fit onto the hub. These wheels here have to have clean mating surfaces without any grit or lubricant like paint or oil or anti seizure compound between them. You can see the rear wheel alloy wheel nuts here lay on the floor next to the worn out brake pads that are now being changed. Wheel mounting on heavy goods vehicles or any type of vehicles, procedures need to be followed to the letter, especially when it comes to uh, torquing figures and routines for torquing wheel nuts, lest they come off. This is either old or new wheels, and you can see the grotty wheels here have to be treated in the same fashion. Okay, so we'll stick with the Land Rover way of doing this on this tutorial. There is a video on an alternative way However, if you don't feel confident, use the way that Land Rover recommends in the workshop manual and check that up for your own specific vehicle. Okay, so we have a copper slip on the um, spigot face and we're going to mount the wheel once again. Basically, there is a tightening sequence for the wheel which you can follow. Land Rover recommend, first of all, putting the nuts on and winding it at least three threads before you use this sequence here, which is like a pentagram star. You are basically tightening the opposite nut to the one that you did previous. If you're using any type of air tool, make sure, first of all, that you are not setting on the highest setting and going over the torque setting that's required for the wheel nut. Right, so basically we'll do the five studded um, shape, which to be honest with you I can never remember how to do, I'll just do opposites of the one before, okay. So the wheel nut is sort of roughly tight, we'll then take the axle stand away and torque the wheel nut. The torque wrench setting for alloy wheels is on the screen here. We are dealing with alloy wheel nuts and first of all we will do the five star pattern first doing opposites of the one before like so for each amount of wheel nuts there is a different pattern however with the five stud it is the pentagram shape after you've torqued them off once leave it for half an hour I usually just leave the torque wrench on the wheel and then go around once again and torque them up. You'll find that they may move a little bit, but what you're doing here, re-torquing to make sure that you've got all the wheel nuts torqued correctly. 